welcome to week eight. We're almost at the end of the first nine weeks, which means we need to take care of a little housekeeping business, which really we shouldn't be doing the whole time, but definitely at the end of the nine weeks. Okay, so you'll see under week eight, we've got a to-do list for today, um, some motion graphing stations, a review for our test. Okay, so let me show those things to you. Our to-do list, when you open it up, you'll see that you need to check for any missing work. So go to Skyward, and remember when you log into Skyward, it's off Launchpad. Skyward doesn't want your full email address. It just wants your first initial, last name, and your four digits. And then your password is your password, like your lunch number. Okay. Look in each class, double check for typos, like maybe you made 100, but it accidentally says a 10. Oops, I don't know to fix it unless you tell me. Okay. Um, once you've looked in Skyward, look for all your classes, but especially science. Um, in Classroom, Click on view your work, like when you're in classroom under classwork, I can't show you on mine because mine looks different because it's the teacher version, but it's like a little dude inside of a box. Scroll down, we've been really busy for the last eight weeks, that's two months in guys, two months. Scroll down and see if anything is missing, you need to take care of that. Something that people will ask is, is this for a grade? We need to shift our mindset as far as that goes, everything that we do builds and leads up to something. Um, it's kind of like you play an instrument and you don't learn your scales and you don't practice and then you show up for the big concert and you don't know what to do. Or if you play a sport and you don't do the drills and you don't listen to the coach's advice, you show up to the big game and you choke, right? It's the same thing academically. Every little thing we do, especially in this crazy virtual time, has purpose and meaning and is trying to help you master a topic, okay? So approach it more like that instead of wondering about will it go into Skyward. Okay, so check your work on Google Classroom, see if there's anything that needs to be completed, look at the assignments that maybe you didn't do so hot on, go back to those, bring up that, you know, Google form or whatnot, look at your mistakes. That's one of the best ways we learn, um, is to go back and look at what we did wrong, so we can analyze that and figure out what the right choice would have been. Okay, so once you've got that done, hopefully you don't have any missing work, air high five, and everything's up to date. We're just going to make sure that your science notebook looks like my science notebook. Book, I can talk. Um, and I would like to think that they're all perfectly like mine, but I'm going to live my reality there. Okay, so you're going to take your science notebook and you're going to match it up to mine page by page. Okay, and I forgot to open that tab, sorry. But you'll open up the file for my digital notebook. Remember, every time we have something we enter in, I take a picture and I put it on here. So you have access to it. And if you're a B day, even better, you can look at it early. But go page by page and don't just copy my table of contents. That doesn't serve a purpose. If your stuff is in some strange order, like looking at kids stuff, pages were skipped, things were at the front and they were at the back. Like consider the science notebook kind of like what it's like in your brain as far as organization goes. We want to make it as smooth as possible. But literally go page by page with your science notebook and make sure you have all the information I have. Because remember, you can use this on your tests, right? That's super huge. Um, and it's a shame to not have your resource available because you didn't finish copying something down. And what if that one thing you didn't get is the thing that you need on the test, right? So even if you think yours is good to go, just double check, right? And some things like NetForge practice, that's on classroom you're supposed to finish them and check it against the key so you know we'll learn a new topic you'll do a little practice we'll check ourselves and we'll move on um, and i'll assess you on it later after you've had that chance to practice okay so go through page by page especially the stuff that is on our upcoming test our physics part two test if you're a day it's on friday if you're b day it's on monday it's so over motion graphs and speed calculations exclusively. So you can focus on those two topics because they're a bit more analytical and mathematical. Okay, so your motion graphs, the motion graphs practice, we did it in class um, in a breakout room with a partner and that key is on Google Classroom. Your speed notes um, and your speed practice, there are eight problems. You know, in this particular class that I took the picture, we got through question four together. That means you only had four questions on your own to finish and then check and the key for that is also a classroom so go page by page in your notebook just to be sure you have everything you need right the science basic stuff is not going away we're going to keep coming back to it all year um, and if you don't kind of get a grip on this now it's only going to 
get more cumbersome and more confusing as we go. You need to make sure your science notebook is ready to rock. Okay, and I go back to my to-do list. Okay, my science notebook was lovely. Everything is beautiful and shiny. Go me. I'm going to double check on Brain Pop to make sure that everything's turned in. With what I've seen, either everything's done or nothing is done in Brain Pop. There's not a lot of in-between. So remember, you go to Launchpad, Library Services, and then Brain Pop. Okay, so make sure you go in, look at your dashboard, just double check. It won't hurt. Edpuzzle, it's edpuzzle.com, or you can go back to an old assignment and click on the link. Most of you are pretty good about handling that. So there will be less missings I have on Edpuzzle, but you just want to make sure that you didn't let something slide. Uh, the one problem with all this virtual stuff, like yes, you have a to-do list on Google Classroom, which is nice, but the bad part is when the computer's off or you're not in front of it, you don't see it. It's like it doesn't exist. So I cannot recommend enough that you get like, you know, um, a planner or just a sheet of notebook paper and every day write down what you need to do because out of sight, out of mind is a real problem, <laughs> especially for sixth graders, especially on the computer all the time. Okay. So just double check those. Now let's say all that is done and good and groovy, as it should be, because we've been slowly doing all those things for two months now. Now if you have dug a hole, you have to climb out of it, and the only way to do that is to put in the work. All right, so we've been putting in for two, um, two months now, right? You may just have to condense that for you, okay? Then motion graphing, that's what today's stuff is, okay? Oh, I need to go up to the top screen. Okay, motion graphing, this is just us practicing our stuff. The first slide is just because they thought it was pretty. I'm not sure. But each component, like this one has a watch it. Watch the YouTube video. Here are your questions. Here, you, when you click on it, you get a text box. You just type the answer. Um, or this one, here's reading. It's not even like, it's maybe a paragraph, right? You read it, and the, the wording's kind of funny. It says, jot down notes and drawings so that will help you remember the meanings of these words. Translation, what is data? You don't need to go Google it. Like I saw a kid in class today trying to Google it. Don't do that. You don't know what rando put it on the internet. Or you might get some college level answer when we need it in sixth grade land. All right. So just use your brain and what you see on this page to help you do this. Now it says you can use um, the sketch or scribble button if you want. For this one right here, it's more of a pain than it's worth. Just type. But just so you know, that little button, you're like, I don't see it, Ms. Melanie. It's not here. Well, I learned something new yesterday, too. So here, where you see this line, almost looks like a baton, you know, a line with two dots on the end. Click the down arrow, and you will see scribble. And then you can draw with it. Okay. But keep on trucking. Um, there's more read it about looking at these different graphs. Practice a couple questions. Here is where you really need the scribble. All right. This is very similar to what you did with the stick man on the graph when we did our graphing games. And so you're drawing in what the line would look like. Remember you have notes on motion graphs or go pull back up the graphing games website and practice it. Like obviously you can get up and move, but you can use those things to help you. Okay. Um, here's another thing kind of like the graphing games. You go to this link and then you'll draw what the line looks like on here. Okay, just follow the instructions and it'll take you through. Here you literally pick up the card and you drag it to wherever it goes and you let it down. Okay, that's all you gotta do. Like match them up. Okay, I'm just asking you a couple quick questions that you can answer there. I know this seems like a lot. It's really not if you know your stuff. It's more that it's just on different slides. Right, it's just part of the formatting. So don't get overwhelmed. It's not as cumbersome as it looks. This one says when it makes says make up a scenario that would match this graph means tell me a story. Okay, tell me a story of pick an object. It could be your dog Fluffy, it could be a bumblebee, it could be, you know, a fast and furious car, whatevs. Tell me a story that would match the motion of this line. Okay. And then you got a couple of um, questions similar to what much you see on your test. Okay. And then a challenge. There's a quizzes here. Some of y'all are super into quizzes, and you can test your knowledge. All right? So knock that out. That's your classwork. All right? So finish that up. And the last bit is 
your physics part two review. Okay, so here's your test days. If you were here on campus, I gave you a physical paper copy. If you at home have access to a working printer, feel free to print it out. If you don't, um, well, honestly, even if you still do, let me grab my science notebook. Come on. Make a page in your science notebook. That reminds me, I gotta go put it on my science notebook file. It says, Physics Part 2 Review. Do your work here, answer your questions here. If you have the physical paper copy, right, we'll fold it in half so we can still see the title and secure it on that page so we don't lose it. Because most of us don't have like a binder and different stuff that we're using right now. But it will, we'll secure it in with like a piece of tape. Just like that. Okay. I will post the key to this um, so that you can check your answers. I already passed sixth grade. So just jotting down what Ms. Nani writes is not an effective way of studying. Okay, so real quick, it doesn't matter what class, this, social studies, whatever. When you get a review, this is the pro way of doing it. Go through it, answer everything you can without looking anything up, without asking anyone questions, me, your mom, your sister, anybody. Then go back through it again. Check the ones that you wrote to see if you were correct. Answer the ones by using your resources now that you couldn't answer before. That will give you the best idea of what you truly know versus what you're just mindlessly copying from your resource. Okay. Looking at what you got there, if you got the answers right and didn't have to look anything up, you can kind of set that aside because you already know and understand that topic. And focus your energy and effort on the things you didn't understand. Because as humans, we gravitate towards what is safe and comfortable. So we like to stay looking at the same things that we already know. But that's not how we learn and grow. All right, so one more time. Go through it once without using any help. Then go back through, check your answers, and look up the ones you didn't know or understand the first time. Okay. There's Friday morning tutoring with me. And then that's it. Because... Monday after school is too late if you're a uh, B-Day, right? Always, if you have questions, come to tutoring, shoot me a message on Classroom, or email me. Thanks, guys.